today we're talking about the brand new Vortex Crossfire Rangefinder. All right, so it's been a little while since I've posted a video. I've got a couple new guns and projects in the work that I'd like to post about. I just need the time to sit down and make the videos and edit them. Uh, but today, I wanted to show you the brand new Vortex Crossfire Rangefinder. Now this is a product that Vortex sent me. Uh, so I got it free of charge. All they asked is that I review it. There was no expectation for uh, what exactly I say about it and there was no compensation they just sent me the product and a hat and a shirt so these are my thoughts on it let's take a look as the crossfire series this is one of the lower end range finders unfortunately since they sent it to me before it's set to be released I don't actually know the MSRP yet I'm gonna post that in a link in the description this is gonna come in a little bit lower than some of their other range finders now, I've used a handheld style range finder in the past, and currently I use and prefer a binocular style range finder. But let's take a look at what this offers. The Crossfire offers HD glass, although it's probably not going to look as bright as a higher end range finder from Vortex. So their razor is generally going to look a little bit brighter and sharper. But having said that, for a lower end rangefinder, this definitely has a great view through the glass. Now they advertise 1400 yards for reflected targets, 950 yards for trees, and about 750 yards for deer sized targets. Now that's not going to be as much as you can get from some of the higher end rangefinders, but that's still a very respectable distance for most hunters a lot of long range shooters and definitely going to be plenty for any of you that want to use this for archery. Minimum focus range is 5 yards. Now at 4 inches long, 2.9 inches high and 1.3 inches wide, this is a pretty small compact package. It is only 4.8 ounces so adding this to your kit is not going to add a lot of weight. Although this is a little more simple than some of the Rangefinders out there that offer things like ballistic compensation. Uh, this does still offer two ranging modes, a horizontal compensation distance and a line of sight distance. So in the horizontal compensation distance, what that does is it compensates for the angle and it gives you an equivalent distance. This is great for a lot of hunting distances because you don't have to think about the angle. You can just use the number that it spits out plug that into your app or use your drop cards and you should get pretty close out to about 800 yards. If you want to use the line of sight mode that gives you an actual angle and a physical line of sight distance from where you are to what you're ranging. This can then be used in a more advanced ballistic software to calculate an exact drop based on that distance and angle. A couple other features that this rangefinder offers is a first and last feature. So you can have it set to range to the closest object in what you are ranging and what is in the viewfinder or in the last. These are two different scenarios that you might actually find yourself in in a hunting situation. All you have to do is use the menu button, a quick tap which is between first and last mode and that allows you to either range the closest item in first, so whatever you're trying to range is in the front and there's trees or other things behind them, it will range whatever's closest. On the flip side, the last mode is great for when you're trying to range an object that is through the trees. So if you're trying to get an elk that's moving through the trees, if you switch it into that last mode, it's not going to bounce off the branches, it's going to hit the elk that's behind them. Now both of those modes do have some limitations based on the size of the laser, how steady you're holding it, and how accurately you can actually get that laser on the target. None of them are perfect. But another thing that this rangefinder does have is a scan feature. So as long as you're holding down the button, it continues to give you ranges and 
you can basically get a feel for if it's picking up closer and further ranges by what it displays as you hold the button. So that's another way to get a better read on what you're seeing is if you see an elk behind the trees and it's bouncing between 30 yards and 80 yards, reasonably you can think that elk's probably the one at 80 yards and the branches are at 30 yards. All right, so a little bit of field testing. I went out and unfortunately, because I only had a couple days with this prior to being able to post this video, I wasn't able to find a lot of deer at 750 yards. I ranged some closer and it worked just fine. After about 800 to 1,000 yards, I was having a hard time picking them up. But I am happy to report that the reflective range that they report of 1,400 yards, I was able to hit house type targets pretty regularly between 1,200 and 1,300 yards. Now these were not perfectly reflected targets, but they are a better target typically because they're flat and more reflective than the trees. So 1200 to 1300 yards is pretty accurate. And then for ranging trees, they claim 950 yards and that's at least what I found. I did find that between about 950 and 1000 yards, I was still able to range a tree target about 90 to 95% of the time. Beyond 1000 yards, I could still range a tree between 1,000 and 1,100 yards, probably about 60 to 70% of the time. So that is always nice to see when a rangefinder slightly exceeds their advertised distances rather than is well below them. For the a lower end monocular, I do think that this is a great option for people that are looking for rangefinders in this budget. Even without the MSRP yet, I can tell you that this is gonna run a little bit cheaper than Vortex's other options. And while there may not be a ton of features, this monocular rangefinder does have pretty much anything you need for basic ranging, shooting, and hunting. This is gonna get you out probably beyond the distance of most hunters, what they're comfortable actually hunting in, which is a good thing, because that means that any distance that you're comfortable hunting, you're not gonna have any problems ranging. Another advantage of being able to range objects further than you want to hunt is being able to use that to plan a route. I did this a few years ago with my son. We found some bucks up on a hillside and I was able to range them at 1600 yards. That was well out of the distance that we were comfortable hunting, especially for my son as it was his first buck. But I was able to pick out a couple rock outcroppings and ridges that were between us and the bucks. And we were able to pick out a ridge line and a route from where we were that would get us to within a little under 200 yards and we would be able to stay out of view of the animals the entire stock. And my son was able to take that buck from the ridge line that we picked using the rangefinder. So there's definitely a lot of advantages for having a rangefinder that ranges further than you think you're gonna need. That's always a better option than not being able to range what you actually do need. All right guys, I'm gonna leave a link to this rangefinder at Euro Optic. It's an affiliate link, so I make a small commission if you make a purchase, but other than that, I have no relationship with them. They're just a company that I like to work with and have used to buy products when they first come out because they usually have competitive prices and items in stock. So if you want to check this out, see what it's going for, Vortex often announces an MSRP that's higher than what the actual street price is, so your optic will be a great place to see what it's actually running for. If you think you need a little more performance out of your rangefinder, check out some of Vortex's other options. They have multiple rangefinders in the monocular style that you can use, and they also have the Fury HD binocular, which is what I use. In fact, if you guys are interested, maybe down the road, I will post a video that talks about the difference and why you would choose a monocular versus a binocular style rangefinder. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of this in the comments section below. Again, I'd like to be posting more content, but I wanna make sure that it's stuff that you guys are actually interested in watching.